Hi, welcome back to Proverbs, our study in wisdom literature, study in the book of Proverbs to gain some practical insight on how we can apply, gain some wisdom and apply it to our lives. Uh, Proverbs chapter 5 is where we are today. And uh, Proverbs chapter 5 is, is uh, sometimes hard to read. Because it seems on the surface and the aroma level of Proverbs chapter 5 that it's simply about don't sleep with someone else's wife. So let me ask you a question. Do you need to be warned about sleeping with someone else's spouse? Consider yourself warned. It's not a good idea. Um, The word in Proverbs chapter 5 for me that is kind of a synopsis word is faithful. Be faithful. Now, when you see the word adultery in the Old Testament, it doesn't just mean um, sleeping with someone else's spouse. It does mean that, but it doesn't just mean that. It means things that would remove your heart from um, the purposes of God, meaning something that would capture your your attention and become an idol in your life. Uh, There are um, as many as you can think of, greed, lust, power, careers, fame, pride, arrogance, all of those things can, be, can be, uh, become idols in our life, meaning we serve that thing as opposed to our lives focusing on and serving the Lord. Now, while in, in our lifetime, it may seem that in the moment, it's, it's very pleasurable to have money. And so what do we do? We try to drive for more. Now, don't get me wrong. Money helps. People who say, well, money doesn't cure. Money doesn't cure, but it definitely helps. And anybody who's been had more month than their money recognizes that money helps. But here's the truth about each one of these elements, things that would pull us away or take our heart away from the Lord's intent for our life. It may seem pleasurable for a moment, but verse 4 says, but in the end, it's bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. It's bitter, produces bitterness, and it produces a broken, wounded, fractured spirit within you, some some confusion about who you are and your identity and who you are. Verse 11 talks about the aggregation of sin in our lives, things that we've invested our life in that were never intended for us, things that we pursued because, oh, that, that, that's what I want, that's what I want. Verse 11 says, at the end of your life, you'll groan. When your flesh and your body are spent, you'll say, how I have hated discipline and how my heart spurned correction. The hardening of our heart often results in a bitterness with age. Unrealized dreams, unrealized hopes, things that we were so distracted by that we thought were so valuable and so important in the moment that when we look back, we're like, why did I invest so much time in that? There are some things that you will never regret in your life, and one is the time that you invest in your family. I, I want to encourage you that if you're struggling with investing time in your family because you're not seeing a return that you would like, start to seek the Lord and seek His wisdom for your family, and then be faithful. Be faithful to focus in on your family, to remove some of the distractions from your own life, and then find ways to connect with your family. Here's here's the conclusion in Proverbs chapter 5. Solomon says this, Drink water in verse 15. Drink water from your own cistern, running water from your own well. Stop looking and envying other people's stuff and envying other people's lives. Focus on the well that you have that God has given you to draw from. Focus on your fountain, the fountain that God has blessed. Because paying, paying attention and focusing on your own fountain and your own well and your own life, what will end up happening is you'll give God space to continue to pour fresh water, fresh resources into that well, meaning renewing your love for your spouse, renewing your passion for your kids, renewing your passion for the Lord. Now here's the kind of closing key verse. It's verse 21. It says this, For a man's ways are in full view, of the Lord and he examines all of his ways. What I've experienced in my life is that when I recognize that God is with me, he's not apart from me. He's not standing opposed to me, but he's with me. And he's with me always. What I end up doing is I end up leaning in and leaning on him more. 
when I'm struggling with things in the way I'm thinking or struggling with what I'm seeing around me, if I recognize that the Lord is with me and he is intentionally examining the path in front of me, now, people will often misconstrue this verse as to say he's examining your path like he's looking for you to be incorrect. I want to present something a little bit different. God is shining a light on the path in front of you through his word. He's examining the path in front of you to make sure that when you walk in it, you're going to be prepared for it. He's examining the choices that we make. Why? Because there's a path in front of you that you need to be prepared for and consequences with every choice. You know this. So I want to encourage you today. When you read Proverbs chapter 5, be thinking about how I can resolve personal faithfulness in my life. Faithfulness to the Lord, faithfulness to my wife or my husband, faithfulness with my kids, faithfulness to my employers or to my job or to my business, faithfulness in my finances. Things that when you're not faithful, they start to drain life out of you. So I want to encourage you today as you walk through Proverbs chapter 5, don't get stuck in the aroma, which is, oh yeah, don't sleep with someone else's spouse. Get down to the question is, how in the world am I supposed to stay faithful in a world like this? Number one, focus on your own well. Begin to invest time and energy in building up the, the person that you are, the, the, the man or the woman of God that you are. Allow God to pour into your life because you are seeking His truth and seeking His wisdom. And when He pours into your life, be free to give it away. Why? Because He is faithful with a little will be given more. God bless you and thanks for joining us for Proverbs chapter 5.